What if I told you our ability to travel faster and further in space was on the verge of a major breakthrough? That we could reach spaces we never thought possible over the course of a lifetime? Well, we may be able to do all that soon with the help of sails. Solar sails. To us on Earth, objects in space can feel like a cookie jar on a high counter to a kid. With current technology, chemical propulsion, a rocket can travel approximately 24,000 miles per second. Fast, but not fast enough. At 4.37 light years away, Alpha Centauri is the next closest star to our sun. With our current technology, that trip would take more than 100,000 years. Solar sails theoretically could make that trip in 20 to 40 years. It's night and day. So how and why do solar sails work? I asked Les Johnson, who's the lead scientist for NASA's NEA Scout Project. A solar sail is basically just like a sailing ship from the old clipper ships that you see in the movies. But instead of the physical wind, a solar sail in space is a sail that reflects sunlight. Most people don't realize as the light reflects from you, it's actually pushing on you. And that's because light doesn't have rest mass, but it does have momentum. So if you think of particles of light, photons, sort of like little BBs hitting something, and as they bounce off, they give a slight push to it. The point is, if you stick a light enough and big enough metallic sail near the sun away from Earth's gravity, it's gonna move. As you get closer to the sun, you get a lot more push from a sail. If you cut the distance in half, so you go halfway toward the sun from the Earth, you don't get just twice as much light on the sail, you get four times the amount of light. It's called the inverse square law. And unfortunately, the opposite is true. If you go out, you get a lot less. By the time you get out to Jupiter, you're getting about 4% of the thrust that you get at the Earth. So what would this mean for missions looking to go far away from the sun, like an interstellar trip? Just open the sail up for business close to the sun. From that initial push, you could just coast and still move faster than a rocket could get you going. The fact that light pushes objects has been known for quite some time, but the fact that it could be used for propelling a spacecraft wasn't discovered until the Mariner missions, which was a bunch of probes in the 60s. One of them had a failure and tilted. NASA scientists figured out that they could use sunlight pressure to right the ship. Now, the Japanese were the first to use the sail in a mission designed to leave Earth's orbit. Their Icarus mission took off in 2010 and successfully used a sail to take a peek at Venus. Now it's NASA's turn. Enter the Near-Earth Asteroid Scout mission. Several branches of NASA are working on it. The mission's agenda is in its name. They want to send out a bunch of small robots to check out nearby asteroids to see which, if any, are worth a closer look or a potentially manned trip. The plan will use sails about the size of a school bus to help the robots pick up speed that they otherwise would not have by a factor of about three miles a second. It's a humble start for what this technology could ultimately grow into. And grow they'd have to, from a school bus size sail to something hundreds of times bigger. This technology is really scalable. And in the far future, it's going to be one of the few technologies that might enable us to actually send robotic probes to another star. Now, we don't know how to do that today. The technology is not here. Uh, as a physicist, I can tell you that it should be possible. And with materials that have come along, things like graphene and other things, I think we're on the edge of having a breakthrough and making really lightweight, really efficient sails. And it won't happen in my lifetime or your lifetime or probably not in your viewers' lifetimes. But I think uh, within the next hundred years, we're probably going to be able to use this technology to take big steps beyond the edge of the solar system. And that's what excites me. The obvious question now is, where to? If we could use this technology to take the jump, where should we go? The dreamer side of me would say, let's send them everywhere. The, the person who knows that somebody has to pay for it and wants to get the data back and doesn't want to take too much risk, I would pick the easiest uh, low-hanging fruit. I'd go to the, the closest destinations first. Although the bigger jumps will likely happen without us seeing it, there are things that could happen with this technology that would be very exciting in our lifespan. NASA is looking at sails to take a craft into interstellar space five or six times farther than where the Voyager crafts already are. If we're that kid reaching for cookies on a high counter as far as space travel, we're not there yet, but with sails, we may have just found a chair to help us reach a little higher. Let us know what you think in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe.